the rematch for the heavyweight championship of the world, Wilder versus Fury 2. I'm gonna go out there, I'm gonna give him a boxing lesson, and I'm gonna knock him out. And I'm gonna get that green belt. I've never been as sure as anything in my whole life. That's how sure I'm gonna kick this mud. It's all over that ring. And with Deontay Wilder, I'm unpredictable, so you just don't know what's gonna happen. But I know when it comes, bam, baby, good night. I told her he was gonna go timber. This is unfinished business. I told Fury two years ago that I was going to baptize him. And I'm the lion, king of the jungle. I'm prepared more than ever for this fight. And come February 27th, we're going to rip his head off his body. So you can really feel a WWE moment in real life. Oh, can you feel it? Boxing fans, the wait is almost over for Wilder and Fury. Part two, 14 months after their epic title clash resulted in a disputed draw. Deontay Wilder, Tyson Fury going to square off once more Saturday at the MGM Grand Garden in Las Vegas. It's so big. There's like two networks, 12 broadcasters putting this thing together. But you know what? I only need one heavyweight. He is the state of combat host. That is Brian Campbell joining us here with a preview of Wilder and Fury 2. And let's start with Tyson Fury, right? One of the biggest sort of entertainers most recently to BC. Coming into this right now, it's a rematch with him, although some changes. There's a, a trainer change here. So what do you make of that? And what are the chances this is a smart move? Uh, it's certainly a red flag at the very least, Tommy, when two months out from the biggest fight of your career like Tyson Fury is, you would train trainers. He dropped 25-year-old Ben Davison, the man who was really responsible for helping Fury shed all that weight, come down from 400 pounds, make that miraculous comeback that he did in 2018 from drug abuse, from mental health issues, from obesity in favor of Javon Sugarhill Stewart, the nephew of the late great Hall of Famer Emmanuel Stewart. The hook here for Tyson Fury is this. We know that first fight was a classic. Many people thought Fury outboxed Wilder and had done enough to win. He settled for a very disputed draw. He said this time around he's not going to leave it in the judges' hands. That's why he brought on someone from that old Cronk Gym system in Detroit. What is Emmanuel Stewart known for? It's knocking people out, preparing his fighters to deliver the boom. He's got Sugar Hill Stewart now in his corner, in his words, preparing him for a knockout of Deontay Wilder. Tommy, that's about as crazy as it gets when you're talking about going in there against Wilder, maybe the biggest puncher in heavyweight history, and you're more of a slick boxer, and you're saying, I am training to knock that man out. It's certainly a big hook for pay-per-view sales to get you in the building. The big question here, is Tyson Fury telling the truth, and is this a smart move just two months out? If anybody can pull it off, it might be that giant who's crazy like a fox. We've seen that. And we've seen him pull off uh, quite the wardrobe recently with all his fights, the different suits. And I mentioned him being more of an entertainer. But again, all eyes will be on him being back to being an elite boxer. And we've had access with both of these guys on HQ Fury and the Bronze Bomber. You spoke with him multiple times on, on your podcast. What do you think he is mentally right now? What was sort of your takeaway as he prepares for this fight? He's as dialed in and confident as I've ever seen Deontay Wilder. And you can certainly make a strong case after whole, how close that first fight was in 2018 as to who would have the advantage coming in. If you've only been watching Deontay Wilder and listening to his interviews, he's had a much more demonstrative year in 2019 to prepare him for this rematch. We've seen the one-punch knockouts of Dominic Brazil and then in that rematch last fall against Luis Ortiz. But even more than that, I've seen a Deontay Wilder this time around who's not allowing Tyson Fury in his head, not allowing all the insults and the trash talk and the bombastic nature of who Fury is to change him. And here's a little secret Deontay Wilder talks about publicly, but it maybe doesn't get the play that it should. That first fight in which Fury outboxed him for seemingly nine of 12 rounds Wilder admitted the moment got a little bit too big for him. It was his first time headlining a pay-per-view. There was obvious frustration trying to follow Fury around, swinging and missing and not catching up with him. Obviously, Wilder made those adjustments to score two big knockdowns and nearly get a knockout. I'm seeing a much more poised, controlled, confident finisher in Wilder entering the rematch. And you want to talk about a scary proposition? This is a guy who can knock you out with one punch at any point in the whole fight and he's entering in an even better mental headspace than he was the first time around. Wow, it's going to be hard to beat Deontay Wilder. 
So forget about the mind games though, BC. It's all about some of the technical stuff in addition to what mentally these fighters are going through. So our viewers are gonna know and want to ask you, give me the edge here. So I'm gonna ask you a path to victory for each fighter. And since we just finished with uh, Deontay Wilder, give me the recipe of success for the Bronze Bomber. You know, for Wilder, it's all about space, using his jab. One thing Tyson Fury did incredibly well in that first fight was constantly paw and parry at Wilder's jab. It's not that Wilder's known for using the jab as a weapon, as maybe he should for being six foot seven and having such a long reach, but he uses that jab as a setup punch for his right hand. And as we all know, when the Bronze Bomber delivers the boom, when it's bomb squad time, people fall and they go and they're out cold. Fury did such a great job the first time around limiting that, suffocating him. He, Deontay Wilder's really going to be able to need to control distance, and even more than that, Tommy, it's about that poise that I mentioned. Anyone who saw that rematch with Luis Ortiz, Wilder was sort of losing the first seven or eight rounds handily, but he was very comfortable in that. This is not a guy who comes into a fight and looks to win more rounds than you and go to the scorecards. This is a guy who comes in there to knock you out. In Fury, you know he's going to try to play mind games. You know he might try to yuck it up a little bit in there. In the rematch on Saturday, it's going to be up to Wilder to stay poised, stay control, and know that whether it comes with one second left in the fight or whether it comes in the first round, if he can land that big right hand, uh, seemingly no one has been able to survive that except for Tyson Fury just barely that first time around. Yeah, people still shocked about how he got up and got through that fight. You hinted a little bit at the Gypsy King. What does he have to do this weekend to come out on top? If we can believe him, Tommy, that he's going to come out to be more aggressive, and I do think there is reason to believe that, that it's not a mind game. The judges, in his opinion, screwed him the first time around. He certainly is going to have to be more demonstrative offensively to win them over. So the key here for Fury, look, is it crazy? Is it going to be walking a tightrope, going up against the fire and trying not to get burned? Yes. But he also did that the first fight and got dropped twice and nearly finished. For him to have success and be more offensive and score against Wilder, it's going to have to come from from crowding him, getting in close. Fury's got a two-inch height advantage. He may end up having upwards of a 50-pound weight advantage. If anyone saw him in his last bout, a defense against Otto Valin, Fury suffered a cut early in the fight. He was forced to actually stand in there and brawl and fight and use his size. That is a key plan here against Wilder. Wilder has not been proven to fight well on the inside. He also doesn't have a great history of fighting well going backwards. Look, Deontay Wilder is not a great boxer. He's a very raw slugger. He just happens to be one of the best punchers this division, this sport has ever seen. Fury's always going to be in that danger zone, but he is one of the rare heavyweights who can do well on the inside, quick hands, good combinations, good angles. It's going to be a crazy walk to get there, but he's going to have to to tie up and crowd Wilder, maybe be a little bit dirty, like I mentioned, and really make this a fight more than a boxing match, more than a slugfest, but a fight. Bring up some great points on both fighters, and, and betters can certainly feel good because right now it's close to being even. Fury maybe a slight underdog or even money. I'm curious to get your thoughts. Here we go. Who do you like in this fight, and who would you be putting your money on? Look, is it a bad bet to go with Deontay Wilder by knockout? Absolutely not, Tommy. We've seen it time and again. He can be losing fights and losing handily, and he's poised. He's in better shape than every other heavyweight of this era. He finds a way to carry that power late and take you out. Here's the problem, though, on the flip side. I do believe there is only one man, and we saw that in the first fight, who can survive and thrive in that fire against Wilder, and that's Tyson Fury. Why? Because he's a freakish athlete at six foot nine with an incredibly long reach, quick hands, quick feet, a great understanding of technical boxing, but also a guy who can freestyle, switch stances. And even more importantly, Tommy, and this is part of the scouting report, a guy who's crazy enough to try this, which is stand in the pocket against Deontay Wilder and outskill him. There is potential comparisons here for what we saw in that great fight in the 1970s, the rumble in the jungle, when Muhammad Ali went in there against the big puncher and George Foreman, Ropa doped him, slipped, and was able to wear him down and stop him. Could that happen again this time around? I'm not saying it's a safe or smart bet, but Tyson Fury seems to have this magic that comes around with him. He says he's a fighting man. His generations go back to bare knuckle, Irish gypsy traveling, boxing kings out in the, in the back alleys for hundreds of years before him. He seems like a guy who can just find a way to win. I like Fury to win by decision, maybe not knockout, but I think he's going to be more offensive. And I think if he can get to that final round and that final bell on the 12th, 
and he can be offensive enough to leave no doubt in the minds of the judges, we could be looking at the best heavyweight of this era. Wow. All right, I'm going to be very curious the next time Deontay Wilder's back on your pod or when you see him out in Vegas. It's going to be interesting to see our Brian Campbell. Given his prediction for this weekend, BC, you are the best, our undisputed champion. Remember, state of the combat or state of combat, boxing, MMA, the Hall of Famer, Sugar Rashad Evans, and our guy Brian Campbell. Download, rate, subscribe, and review today.